Hey! I lost my train of thought. Hey, I like the uh, thank. <laughs> hey, professional door opener here. Would you like a cutting board or a birdhouse or a thing? Let me get a thing. Just repair that board. This is a thing. Uh, this, in all seriousness, today's video sponsor is me. Our eShop is live, as a reminder, dogsong-woodworks.square.site. I'll put it in an area, definitely. Brain, do work things, sometimes. Very hard to concentrate early in the morning. I speak like caveman now, don't know why. Here thing, thing on site, bye. Is it really gonna be my head? <laughs> I have three of these. These come with glass 250 milliliter uh, beakers. You can put water in them. You can, since it's springtime, you can cut your rose or whatever flowers you have. You can stick the button here, put your water in, and it's a nice little decorative display, flower display. That's what I should call these. Beaker flower display. Product naming. Anyways. These have two engraved Ohio quilt stars. On the bottom, we have my logo. Crafted in, crafted with pride in the USA. Not with brains, with pride. Uh, this is butternut. I have one in sassafras. Let me go grab that. This is our sassafras one. Uh, if you want to take a closer look at these, you can do so on the website where you can uh, check us out on Instagram. I think we're just Dog Song Woodworks on Instagram. Uh, if you see this logo, see the logo? Good, you have eyes. If you see that logo in the profile picture of the Instagram profile you're looking at, it's me. Uh, I'm not famous enough to have fakes yet. Brain no work again. Uh, but yeah, if you see that photo, it's me. Uh, I post everything I do here in short form content on that profile. Uh, we have these, we have three cutting boards, two of them. Uh, this one is Ambrosia Maple and Hickory. This is just regular Maple and Hickory. Uh, and I have one more. This one is Red Oak and Maple. Uh, and there will be other things coming soon. Uh, these are 9x13 by the way, about 3 quarters of an inch thick. They're finished with Howard's Butcher's Block Conditioner and Mineral Oil. And, uh, they're pretty sweet, if I do say so myself. I can do custom size orders. So, anyways, that's enough of the ads. Let's get to today's video. Remember, dog song what works at Square Dead Site. Hello, uh, pretend CNC guy here. Uh, Today's video, uh, I finally come up with the settings for business cards using this. This is, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's craft, uh, it's actually cardboard. What people would normally call cardboard is actually, uh, what do they call it, corrugated fiberboard. I actually used to make boxes for a living. Uh, now I do fun stuff like this. But I have 10 of these sheets, I can get two business cards out of each. That's what I'm making. Let me go grab one. Here we are. They're pretty neat. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this on video. Um, it's got my phone number and everything on here. Please don't spam call me. I will report you. <laughs> and then I'll block your number. So, uh, yeah, this was a huge pain in the you know what to get these settings right. I don't know what it is about this white cardboard. It is just incredibly difficult to uh, get to engrave consistently. But, figured out the settings. Uh, people are always asking me for business cards. They, they find out what I do and like, hey, you got a business card? And it's like, eh, no, sorry. So uh, yeah, I'm making 20. I should have 22, maybe 23 good ones uh, ready to hand out to people. I'm going to be taking pretty much my entire stock here to a um, brick and mortar store in a city called Fremont. And hopefully they'll be willing to carry uh, my products in the future. Uh, we've discussed it previously and I told them back then I just don't have any product to give you guys. 
So hopefully they're still open to it. Hopefully they're still open. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and throw you guys on the time lapse and engrave these. Uh, in case you're curious, I got this laser engraver quite a while ago, like late 2020, I want to say. This is from a company called Ortur. This is our Laser Master 2. This is the 20 watt model. And the actual engraving watts is something like five ish. Uh, my software is Lightburn. It's very old and outdated. Uh, I have to redo my subscription so I can upgrade to their new version. But this is 0.9.16. It's technically a beta version. But it works. Uh, and I made this enclosure way back. It's just to keep dust out of the laser engraver. We got a little four inch uh, pusher fan that's mainly used for duct work, but it's venting to the outside so I'm not breathing this in. Let's engrave some stuff. Alright, so I'll show you what I do with paper. I want to make sure we're fully through on both sides. I have this set to leave tiny little pop-out tabs. And it looks like we're just barely starting to burn through the back. I, I kind of saw that happening and I kept the, uh, or I changed the engraving settings for the text because this is a little uh, aggressive. So I'll, I'll show you what I do with these. Take our cards. I have a fine bristle brush here. I'm going to brush all of the carbon out of the engraving. I'm going to go both up and down and left to right. Oop, one popped out. And these you can kind of see through a little bit. But I'll still put these on there. I'm going to make a stand for all these to sit in. But you should be able to touch these without smearing a bunch of black all over the place. Let's try these again with the updated settings. And uh, yeah, I'm working on this, and I just touched it, so. So I decided I didn't like how this engraving over paint was going and I didn't feel like clear coating over this paint when the ash was already ruined. So I'm taking this 
cordless belt sander by Metabo HBT and I'm just going to sand all the paint off of this thing and start from fresh. And as I'm about to learn here, this sanding pine plywood is one of the worst things you can do with the belt sander because it's just so obnoxious. As you can see here, the main problem is these long pine fibers keep clogging up. Now, I developed a sanding technique with the belt sander that gets rid of this problem. Uh, basically, I just go the other way with the belt sander. So, uh, you know, I, I wish I had learned this trick back when I did this. It would have saved me a whole lot of effort and uh, headache. Oh boy, what a day this has turned out to be. Anyways, while I was sanding this, a uh, Instagram user by the name of DPA771, hope I got your name right, I'm pretty sure I did, uh, left a comment um, saying, I can't be the only one who watches your YouTube videos from beginning to end, and I'll tell you what brother, if you're watching this, I really appreciate the support. This past half a year or so, I've kind of been wondering based on metrics and stuff, it's, am I just wasting my time with this stuff here or so? I'm, I'm really happy that at least somebody enjoys it, so. Anyways, back to this. I've kind of noob sanded it, and I'll leave a uh, little blurb here about what noob sanding is. Both sides of this to 100 grit. Now, fellas, if you're running a laser engraver, something to keep in mind, if you sand above 100 or 120 grit, if that's your system, if you're one of the guys that uses 80, 120, 220, I am a 60, 100, 150, 220 kind of guy. But, you know, there's multiple ways to do things. Uh, if you're one of those people who has a laser engraver and if you laser engrave wood regularly, you probably already know this, but if you go above 100 to 120 grit, you're actually making things harder for the laser engraver because at that point, you're starting to burnish the surface, which means it's becoming shiny. Now, laser diode laser engravers, um, their number one enemy is reflectivity. So you want to keep this as dull as, you know, what's reasonable. I wouldn't go... I wouldn't laser engrave something that was at 60 grit because you would have to, by the time you get to uh, 100, 150, 220, you might already be taking part of your laser engraving away. But, where was I going with this? Yeah, you 100 grit is the max you want to do for uh, pre-sanding up to your laser, laser engraving process. I don't know why I can't talk today, it just is. Oh... Pine is just my mortal enemy, man. Ever since that molding video, well, ever since I started woodworking, really. Even with a random orbit sander, what'll happen with this really wide grain stuff, this lighter stuff will be lower than the darker stuff because this darker grain here is actually harder. So you'll end up with a bunch of waves. So my way of getting around that is I'll use a quarter sheet sander, or if you have a third sheet or a half sheet, use that. Because those are much better at keeping surfaces flat regardless of hardness than a random orbit sander. So, while I've been doing that, I have gotten, how many of these? Six cards done, we're on to seven and eight right now. It's nice that I can keep working in here while that's running. Also, I got some mini fridge. Uh, 
but Fluff found this in his garage, didn't want it, so he gave it to me. Still works, so I just had to clean it up. No beer in it yet, but... <laughs> I don't know if I want beer in there, honestly. I'm not a big drinker, but... There's a lot of tools in here, especially like that. 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 You don't want to be drinking. Sanding? Okay, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, this is just turning out to be a really, really fun video. Alright, well, since I don't have anything else going on, I'm going to stick this phone in there on a little mini tripod and see if we can't get you some cool uh, time lapse. Two days behind now on this laser engraving crap. Um, I had to completely take my compu stick apart this morning, unplug the battery and plug it back in to clear CMOS because it wouldn't boot. And I thought I'd lost my last computer, so. Yeah, this thing's not getting unplugged. Ever. Not anymore. We'll just uh, have to risk it for the biscuit. I do trust this surge protector. So when thunderstorms roll through, I will just unplug everything except for the computer because, yeah, I just, I don't trust it to boot up anymore, so. I'll shut it down, but I won't unplug it. So what, not, so what I'm doing now is uh, I'm making a business card holder. I'm just going to kind of babysit this because I've never engraved. Uh, something like this on Hickory before, so I'm just watching it. It's not the fastest way to do things because I do have to brush and prep all of these. I think there's 20 of those. But if something on this messes up, I want to catch it before it does uh, something I can't fix. So. And then I also have to make an info plaque for one of my mother's quilts. She wants to sell it in the same shop that I'm going to be soliciting basically <laughs> and then I have to make the plaques for those three and probably two of these and those will all they might be pine they might be hickory I don't know yet I also have a potential big project coming up that I don't want to talk about right now because I don't want to jinx things so but yeah, it'll be, I don't think I've done it, I've done it before, but I don't think I've done a video on it, so, um, yeah, hopefully we get it, because I really could use the cash from this, like, now, so, if not, we'll just have to figure something out, that's what I've always done. Small business is hard, folks. Alright, I'm gonna throw you guys on, how about a nice relaxing time lapse? I've had a morning. Let's have a relaxing time lapse. <clears throat> All right. So 
I've got all of the uh, wood pieces uh, engraved for that project. Uh, right now I'm engraving the firewood sign, the one that I belt sanded yesterday. Well, that's running, that's gonna take a little bit over five hours to do both sides. The realities of having a LED diode um, laser engraver. But I'm gonna brush these out, brush all the carbon out of these as best I can so that these are ready to go. So, yeah. Yeah, let's brush. It's actually kind of cool. Stack of engraved business cards. I've got to cut. Funny story about this. <laughs> I uh, was trying to attach a little hidey hole thing where I could just stuff like my phone and random stuff here. And uh, I tried the PT50, staples just weren't long enough. So I grabbed my narrow crown, and as soon as I shot the nail on this, this stopped. <laughs> and it froze the computer. So uh, yeah. Nice to know the G-meter on that's very, very sensitive. It's currently engraving that. It's got to do it on both sides. Uh, what did I do? 1,500 millimeters a minute at 80% power. That's a 20 watt uh, LED laser with like a five watt output probably. So these are done, they're ready to go. So I gotta cut these. Do that with the uh, RSH2. This is just thin stock pine. And then this is going to be a business card holder. So I've got to leave enough space at the bottom for the business cards to sit on, cut the excess off the top, and I got to cut a base. So this is actually going to be finished. These I don't think I'm going to bother finishing, but this will be finished in. Uh, uh, whatever dries quickly, probably shellac, because I don't want to take the uh, ash out of there. I'm thinking when slash if I get the big uh, project uh, that the customer goes for. After that's done, this blade is going to get sent in to get sharpened. Because I've had it for a little over two years now. It's time. WHBT MP50A, two inch per pin nail, we're using one and three eighths inch nails today. So the basic idea is we do this and then we do this. What I'm going to do is apply a very thin bead of glue.
have one tiny little accident down here at the bottom. But it's okay. We will, uh, when this dries, take it to the 120 grit on the belt sander. Put it on your counter. And bam. You guys can't even see that. There you go. I like that. All right. Might go with the teak oil, or it might go with the satin wax. Still haven't decided. It's almost dinner time for today, so I'm gonna call it out here for like an hour or so, and then come back and finish this stuff because I want this done and ready to go for tomorrow. down to like the last three or four clips of this video. I don't have any of the self stick on uh, felt pads left. I thought I had three, but apparently not. So uh, I have these really old ones where they were stick on, but you now the uh, adhesive backing is no good anymore. It's permanently stuck on there. So we're gonna hot glue these on with just a little dab with our uh, This is an old Black & Decker hot glue gun I found at a uh, local thrift store. This is, I got this back when I was first started woodworking. It works. It's no GT300, but it does work. And it works rather well, actually. I'm putting these on so it doesn't scratch up their countertop. Use a hot glue gun out here. Ooh, it's a bit much. That's okay. I can cut the rest of that off with an exacto knife. So yeah, there's that. I'll let that dry for a little bit. Grab my knife, cut off the excess, and uh, put some. I've determined. I'm probably gonna go with satin wax. I gotta check the Instagram because I put up a little poll of sorts. Four options were BLO, which I'm pretty much ruling out, uh, teak oil, which would be appropriate for this because it is a dense hardwood, uh, satin wax and Danish oil. I also have some wipe on poly, but that stuff probably isn't good anymore because I'm pretty sure I bought that about two years ago, maybe a year ago, but I don't know. So let this thing cool down and uh, Cut to when we uh, put a finish on this. Alright, so I decided to try something new. I've had this stuff for a while. It's, whoops. Uh, Howard's Orange Oil. It's the same brand of the cutting board. The same brand makes the cutting board oil and the butcher's block conditioner that I use. They make some other products too. They make Restore Finish, which is probably what they're most famous for. But these were looking a little dry, so I decided to put a coat of orange oil on them. Oh, they look awesome, especially this one in the middle. Looks 
looks like a walnut almost. Uh, and I decided to try it just on this bare hickory, just to give it some color, and it looks pretty good. Now that that's all taken care of, the only thing left is I'm waiting on this. <coughs> it's set to flood fill, so some of these letters look incomplete. But it'll start. My old version of light burning is not uh, the most optimized in the world, so sometimes you end up with weird stuff like this where it'll start a letter and then not finish it and go to some other letter and then eventually it'll fill everything in. The other side's already done, so we're just waiting on that. That's the last thing this laser engraver will do today. Uh, tomorrow, I probably won't run it tomorrow, but unless I just get really far ahead because I do want to turn This hickory into a couple coaster sets. I feel like those would sell pretty well. And I got these guys sitting out here. They're all ready to go. They look fantastic. So we've got a Malamute, Akita, and a Shiba Ambrosia. I'm starting to learn what each one looks like. I really hope these sell fast. So, no word yet on that other project I was talking about. We have our business cards here. We have these things, which I still need to brush out. They're all pine. Thin stock pine. It's just meant to tell a little story about what each thing is. So. And I also, oh, two things. I rearranged this 30 piece because it's got space on both sides. I took all my favorite parts out of all three kits and put it in here. So we've got a Vortex bit holder, our two U guard uh, nut drivers, the magnetic Phillips, a regular sleeve Phillips, our nut setters, and our T10 to T40 set. I got Phillips 1 to Phillips 3 in here, slotted squares, and then the 2-inch uh, bits in here as well. That's pretty much everything I use on a regular day-to-day -day basis, and that's all in one kit. That's the nice thing about these uh, kits. So the other one I have set up, it's got T15 to T30, I think, and uh, some other bits. And the third one... Uh, kind of just has backup bits in it right now. What's this one? Yeah, it's just got a couple duplicates in there, as well as another bit holder that I don't need. But the, uh, the second kit that has the majority of the other bits is in the DEX kit. And then this one will go in the triple hammer kit. The other thing is, I blew all the dust out of these. Uh, the two multivolts were absolutely filthy. Because those were running when we did flooring. Way back when. Which I don't even think I shot a video about. I blew all the batteries out. I blew both the miter saws out. I blew some sanders out. The circ saw, the rear handle saw. And some other stuff. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Remember to check out dogsong-woodworks.square.site for, uh, you can get any of those cutting boards. You can get these flower displays uh, and the birdhouses. These guys, I still have two of these. I have plenty of lumber to make more of these, so. Yeah, I only made three because I wanted to sell, make sure they would sell before I made a whole bunch of them. So like I said, I've had difficulty selling those in the past. But, thank you for uh, watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Check that out.